thinking that is making us feel whatever we're feeling. It's not anything outside of us. Where is the feeling? It's not out there. It's in here. This is all inside work, guys. That's all this is. I decide upon the good I would achieve. John, I kind of talked about this a little bit. You know, we'll say, oh, I want to experience this, and I want to experience that, and I want to do this or want to do that. But somewhere down inside of us, there's still that voice saying, you don't deserve it. You aren't good enough. We need to attack. No, I shouldn't say attack. But in a way, it's kind of like that. We need to consciously go after this belief system deep inside of us that isn't serving us. And again, the way to do it is not by force. The way to do it is by love. Love that thought. Love what's happening, no matter what it is. Release the judgment. Relax. Oh my gosh, can I just relax? I decide upon the good I would achieve. But I also decide upon the good that I'm keeping away from me because I don't believe it's possible. Has anybody experienced that? Yeah. I don't believe there's anything better than this. The last statement is the really tough one. So Bill, I'm sorry. Um, Chris, your son, we got, we got to work through this. Everything that happens to me I've asked for. That's pretty heavy duty, isn't it? Everything that happens to me I have asked for, and I receive as I have asked. Who asked for cancer? He's going to have a little surgery. It's going to be good. We're going to pray with you later and make sure that it's all good and get you prayed up before you have a little surgery tomorrow. And Chris has been dealing with a son who's seven weeks now, has, has been very ill. How can we assimilate this with... With the way we've been raised to believe that, you know, there is this good and bad and, and pain and hurt and, and crisis. How can, we, how can we look at people who are experiencing, you know, devastation like hurricanes and say, everything that happens to me I ask for. How did I ask for this? And yet if we truly believe science of mind principles, if we really believe that, We've been saying it all along. My thinking creates my experience. If I change my thinking, I change my life. Can we change experiences that go on out there? Can we change the experience? Yes or no? No. 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 Yes. <coughs> Things are going to happen. Is all of life going to be happy and merry and everybody's going to live forever? and everything's going to be joyous in your world. <laughs> what we can change is how we think about it. Are we busy thinking about it being negative? Are we judging what's going on as being awful? Are we awfulizing what's happening around us from something as simple as the water pipe breaking to the car not starting, to a flat tire, to a hurricane that takes out a city, or a tornado that takes out a path across the Midwest. What makes it bad is the way we think about it. What makes it a problem is what we put into it. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity. Everything that you call a problem that you're judging as bad is an opportunity for change. It's an opportunity for what A Course in Miracles calls a miracle in your thinking by changing the way you're looking at it. And when you change the way you look at it, you change the way it feels. When you change the way it feels, you change your experience. And it can all shift. 
So in this new year, I kind of challenge you a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Release the judgment. Start with that stuff outside of you. I mean, the Course in Miracles says the same thing Stephen Song said. That, you know, what was it? It's, excuse me, I'm just a dream. Yeah. It's just a dream. I'm the one making up the dream. I can change it anytime I want. That's what we've always taught here. That's what this is about. An old man went to the doctor with his wife, and um, he was complaining. It was his wife's appointment, and he was telling the doctor, she doesn't hear very well. And he goes, how can I test her hearing? And the doctor says, well, you know, stand back behind her a ways and ask her a question and see if she responds and get a little closer and, and kind of test it. So he goes home and he's all excited because he's going to test and prove that she can't hear very well so he can go back to the doctor and really get the doctor to take her in and have her hearing tested. So he, about 20 feet away from her, and he says, uh, Honey, what's for dinner? And no response. And he gets about 15 feet. She's still facing the other way. He gets about 15 feet away. Honey, what's for dinner? No response. He's now about 10 feet away. gets a little closer. Honey, what's for dinner? No response. He gets five feet from her. And he says, honey, what's for dinner? And she turns around and says, for the fourth time, it's lasagna. <laughs> We're busy looking at what's wrong with us there. We're busy looking at what we don't like out there. <laughs> Guys. It's in here. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.